Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about goldfish evolution and developmental biology, so I have decided to produce this video series based on my paper and a book. We will explore goldfish evo devo. In this episode, I will introduce some basic biological background of goldfish. Goldfish are fish, but uh, have you ever thought about what kind of fish they are? I will explain the taxonomy and the phylogeny of goldfish and also explain their genes and the genomic feature. Goldfish is one of the vertebrate species. The vertebrate species can be divided into two groups, jawed and the jawless vertebrates. As you can see, goldfish have a jaws, so it is obvious that goldfish are categorized into the jawed vertebrate. Living jawed vertebrate species include cartilaginous fish, lobe finned fish, and the ray finned fish group. Sharks and rays are cartilaginous fish. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and lungfish. Silicons also. These animals belong to the lobe fin fish. Most of the bony fish species on the fish market are categorized into the ray finned fish group. Goldfish also included in this group. Ray finned fish are further classified into different groups. Each group contains many species. The Teleost group, in particular, has significantly increased in species number, and the Teleost species have adapted and spread into almost every region of the surface and underground water on Earth. Taxonomists classify highly diverged Teleost species into several taxa, and the goldfish belong to the Otophysi group. The detailed phylogeny of the autophysi has unsolved problems, but the researcher categorized approximately 8,000 to 10,000 teleost species into uh, this group. To be honest, I'm not sure about the exact number, but uh, anyway, a lot of fish are categorized into this group. I think some of you may be wondering why a lot of fish are categorized into this group. Are there any characteristic features of this group? Why the researchers categorize these fish species into the same group? Because all of these fish species possess the Weberian apparatus. This is a structure consisting of four bones that functions as an auditory organ, transmitting sounds from the swim bladder to the inner ear. This is a picture of goldfish skeleton. As you can see here, goldfish have the Weberian apparatus, so goldfish are categorized into autophysi group. Okay, one step further, let's learn about the phylogenetic position of goldfish. Although the phylogenetic relationship of the autophysi group is difficult, scientists have agreed that the goldfish belongs to the family Cypriniformes. This family includes three species that have been intensively researched in experimental biology, the goldfish, common carp, and the zebrafish. While goldfish and the common carp are closely related, zebrafish are more distantly related to them. Goldfish and the common carp have a similar history as domesticated animals and share similar characteristics that are useful to researchers. The zebrafish is also frequently used as a model organism in experimental biology because it is easy to breed and maintain in aquarium conditions. Its small size and short life cycle also make it ideal for molecular developmental genetic studies. As a result, the zebrafish has become an important animal for studying molecular developmental mechanisms. So we further study the goldfish themselves and their closest relatives in more detail. In some research articles, goldfish are called Carasius aurotus. In this video series, I also use this name. However, 
As we know, goldfish contain different types of the ornamental strains. It is also known that Carassius oratus populations are distributed in the worldwide habitat. Some researchers call them Crucian carp rather than goldfish. There are ambiguities and it is a bit confusing for us. To avoid this confusion, we will define goldfish in this video as a domesticated Carassius oratus strains that have been selectively bred for ornamental purpose, including variations in color and morphology. Of course, this is my definition in my video series, but uh, this definition helped us to further classify goldfish populations into different groups based on their historical background. So different types of goldfish can be designated by a strain name and or suitable descriptive words. For example, well-established and commercially available ornamental strains are identified as their strain names such as Ranchu and Ryukin. Moreover, all of the ornamental strains together can be collectively called ornamental goldfish and the ornamental goldfish that escaped into nature are also referred as to feral goldfish, which is consistent with the terminology used by civil researchers. One step further, to make things clearer, we define Crassius oratus as a group of Crassius species that form the cluster or clade with domesticated goldfish that are simultaneously excluded from other Crassius species. This sounds still a bit complicated, so I will explain using this picture. This is goldfish. This is not goldfish, but closely related to goldfish. But this group is not related to goldfish, but crucian carp. Then this group can be called as Carassius oratus. Based on this definition, we can clarify how to categorize the domesticated goldfish and Carassius oratus species living in the wild habitat. However, one important point should be noted. The point is that Carassius species tend to cause interspecies hybrid, and the distribution patterns of Carassius species tend to be easily modified by human activity. So the detailed phylogenetic relationship of Carassius species tends to be quite confusable because reconstructing a plausible phylogenetic tree of Carassius species is challenging. Some scientists use the term Carassius oratus complex. I saw some papers that described quite complicated phylogenetic relationship of Carassius species. Even though scientists use the molecular phylogenetic technique, their relationship is still complicated. In this series, we will focus on the ornamental goldfish strains and their developmental process. Therefore, we do not need to investigate too deeply into their detailed phylogenetic relationships. But interspecies hybrid is related to the next topics. Goldfish have 100 chromosomes in diploid cells. Common carp also have 100 chromosomes in diploid cells. However, zebrafish have only 50 chromosomes. This indicates that the chromosome number doubled in the common ancestor of goldfish and common carp. This type of change in the chromosome number is called polyploidization. Specifically, the increase in the number of chromosomes as a double is called tetraploidization. In the recent genome sequencing analysis have revealed that the tetraploidization occurred at the common ancestor of goldfish and common carp through species hybridization. This type of genome duplication or tetraploidization called as allotetraploidization. And in the same lineage of organisms, genome duplication without species hybridization has been reported. This is known as autotetraploidization. In any case, tetraploidization doubles the number of genes, leading to complicated issues regarding the phylogenetic relationship and the comparison of genes. If you want to compare the same gene from two different species, you need to pick up the correct set of genes from each species. But how can you be sure you have selected the same gene? 
One criterion is whether the selected gene shares a common ancestral gene. These genes are called the orthologous genes. Since the idea of orthologous genes is quite important, I will explain again. Orthologous genes are genes that have derived from a common ancestral gene through speciation events and are found in different species. More particularly, in this figure you can trace back the light green line easily. However, if the number of closely related genes increases due to genome duplication or tetraploidization, the lines also increase. In the case of allotetraploidization, the light green lines indicate species 1 gene, while the dark green line indicates species 2 gene, making the line quite complicated. This means that in one species such as goldfish or common carp, two closely related non orthologous genes derived from genome duplication appear. These genes are called paralogous genes. Parents of paralogous genes can sometimes be frustrating for researchers because it can be challenging to identify orthologous relationship between the genes. However, the occurrence of paralogous genes can also provide interesting biological phenomena. One of the interesting points of the occurrence of paralogous genes is that the genes show sometimes slightly different functions and cause some advantageous phenotypes and uh, certain conditions. For example, it has been reported that the low oxygen tolerance observed in goldfish might be derived from duplicated genes resulting from the genome duplication. This is a significant feature for the goldfish. In fact, low oxygen tolerance provides an advantage for goldfish that are maintained under aquarium conditions with high population densities and enable them to endure long-term travel from one place to another. This feature allowed goldfish to extend their distribution area to various water environments around the world with the help of humans. Additionally, this low oxygen tolerance allows researchers to conduct complicated experimental research. In fact, goldfish are larger than zebrafish in their body size and simultaneously their brain size is also larger than the zebrafish and the goldfish have low oxygen tolerance. These combinations of phenotypic characteristics might be preferred by endocrinologists and neuroscientists. And the appearance of the ornamental phenotypes is also related to the duplicated genome of goldfish. How did these morphological characteristics emerge in the goldfish lineage? Understanding the function of the duplicated genes is crucial to get insight into this issue. This topic is highly significant in goldfish Evo Devo, therefore, I will delve into this issue in a future episode. Relating to this, I explain how can we use goldfish as an experimental model system for Evo Devo in next episode. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch next episode. See you soon.